Insulin is a blood sugar regulating hormone, but it's also a fat creation and storage hormone. And if your insulin levels are high and you're struggling with weight loss or weight loss resistance is sometimes what it's called, your insulin levels may be contributing to that because you cannot burn fat with high insulin levels. Weight loss expert, Dr. Morgan Nolte. But from the insulin model, you're viewing everything through the litmus test of how does this choice affect my insulin? And I like to say also inflammation. They're strong while they're in their environment and then they go to a party or they go on vacation and then they fall off the wagon. So how do we address this type of mindset and what do we do instead? With good habits, you are sacrificing things in the short term. What about getting up early? You're sacrificing your time in bed. You're sacrificing your comfort. That's a lot of what developing good habits and the sacrifices required to develop good habits is you're just sacrificing your comfort. And so if we can change your philosophy to it's okay and actually desirable to get into the uncomfortable zone and get out of our comfort zone, then we can have a more positive relationship with discomfort. In order to really change, in order to reach a goal, you have to have a very strong... Hey there, welcome to the Happy Habit Podcast. I'm Matthew. If you're new around here, I like to talk health, well-being and self-improvement with many of the world's leading experts every Monday and Thursday. If you're already familiar with what I do here and would like to show your support, you can do so for free by liking, subscribing, sharing by email, WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever way you choose in order to get the message to lots of people who can get value as you do from this podcast series. You could also leave us a positive rating on iTunes and Spotify and become a subscriber over on YouTube where you can leave a comment and click that bell notification for any new videos that come out each week. Now, today I welcome back clinical specialist Dr. Morgan Nolte. She proved very popular last time round. In this episode, we talk about the insulin model of sustainable weight loss. But crucially, we explore the mindset that we need in order to achieve any goal, including weight management goals. Discover the habits needed to bring about sustainable behaviour change, such as committing to a goal, embracing discomfort, tracking activities and controlling the controllables, and also engaging in what is called auto-suggestion. And if that term is new to you, guess what? You're already engaging in auto-suggestion right now when it comes to your negative habits and behaviours. This is a masterclass on how to attain any goal. Dr. Nolte spells out exactly how to achieve any aim from moment to moment and from day to day. I guarantee you'll get lots out of this episode, especially if you have struggled in the past with turning things around, whatever your goal may be. Well, Dr. Nolte, welcome back to the podcast. You are a clinical specialist who helps people lose weight sustainably. And part of that involves mindset, behavior change and new habit adoption. Now, we will come to that shortly. But initially, can we speak about weight loss and uh, the insulin model of weight loss, which uh, you promote? And uh, can we just to start off with, to put it in context, let's explain why insulin is important when it comes to weight loss for those people who haven't encountered that term before. Yeah, so the insulin model of weight loss is a little bit different, and I think it's better than calories in, calories out. Insulin is a blood sugar regulating hormone, but it's also a fat creation and storage hormone. And if your insulin levels are high and you're struggling with weight loss or weight loss resistance is sometimes what it's called, your insulin levels may be contributing to that because you cannot burn fat with high insulin levels. It's not something that's commonly tested by physicians, and that's we kind of talked in the last episode on the importance of knowing your insulin levels. So from a calories in, calories out model, you just have two levers. You can eat less or you can move more. And so many people have tried every single version of that that they can think of. But from the insulin model, you're viewing everything through the litmus test of how does this choice affect my insulin? And I like to say also inflammation. How does this food choice, how does this exercise choice How does my sleep management and my stress and my medications, how do all of these come together to affect my insulin? So we have a lot more levers that we can pull based on somebody's lifestyle to help lower the insulin and and inflammation. And when we do that, we're not just doing some quick fix diet. We're really getting to the root cause of their weight gain. And when we do that, when we treat the cause, we can finally see a long-term effect. 
Okay, so if we can now move then to the important part of losing weight, which is keeping it off and getting healthy in the long term, your mantra is sustainability. It's all about sustainability as far as weight loss is concerned. And sustainability, certainly in my mind, would mean a lifelong change. That means doing new things day in, day out. And we're certainly all about incorporating good, healthy new habits on this podcast. With that in mind, you have some tools when it comes to achieving sustainability, uh, like habit stacking, for example. Could you talk to us about these tools? I kind of just want to set the stage a little bit more and explain to people my philosophy on habits and goal setting and how do we stay committed? Because I think one of the biggest pitfalls people run into is they start and they stop and they start and they stop and they they're strong while they're in their environment and then they go to a party or they go on vacation and then they fall off the wagon. Their words, not mine. So how do we address this type of mindset and what do we do instead? So the first thing I really want people to understand is that good habits require sacrifice and bad habits require more sacrifice. With good habits, you are sacrificing things in the short term. Yes, good habits, going to bed on time. What are you sacrificing? You're sacrificing staying up late and watching the extra 30 to 60 minutes of the TV show. Maybe you're sacrificing some cuddles with your husband. What about getting up early? You're sacrificing your time in bed. You're sacrificing your comfort. That's a lot of what developing good habits and the sacrifices required to develop good habits is you're just sacrificing your comfort. And so if we can change your philosophy to it's okay and actually desirable to get into the uncomfortable zone and get out of our comfort zone, then we can have a more positive relationship with discomfort. So good habits require short-term sacrifice that often require getting outside of our comfort zone and paying attention to our thoughts. However, I want you to understand that bad habits require more sacrifice. If you continue bad habits of poor sleep, chronic stress, poor nutrition, poor exercise habits, smoking, drinking too much, you're sacrificing your quality of life. You are sacrificing your finances. And you are sacrificing the quality of your family's life when they have to become your caretakers down the road. Those are far greater sacrifices than learning how to get outside of your comfort zone, learning how to control your thoughts, and developing these good habits. That's the very first thing that I really wanted to address to light a fire under every single listener's rear end that, yes, there is sacrifice required to change, and the risk for not changing is even greater. Now, the second thing that I want people to understand is that in order to really change, in order to reach a goal, you have to have a very strong commitment. You have to know exactly what you want, and you have to make that an irrevocable, committed decision to get there. An irrevocable, committed decision. If you are 95% committed to your goal, that means you are 100% uncommitted to your goal. And I think a lot of people say they want to get healthy, say they want to lose weight, that they're not sure that they, they don't, they're not aware that they have subconscious limiting thoughts that are preventing that full, whole body, whole spirit commitment. And so that's the second thing that I want to encourage people to think about is okay, you say that you want this, or is it an irrevocable committed decision? And you'll feel it in your body. If you're full of crap and you're like, nope, I'm lying to myself, you'll feel it. And so that's the second thing is you have to decide what you want and have that irrevocable committed decision or you will not get the results that you want. And then the next thing is once you make that decision, I want you to think about making every single choice from the goal, not to the goal. So not only do you have to make that committed decision, I also want you to think about it being done. This is done. I am there. I am that person. And then when you're in that mindset, that's when you reverse engineer the process that you did to get there and you start becoming that person now. That's what I mean when I say we're working from the goal, not to the goal. And so some things that you can really ask yourself to say like, okay, well, how did that person who reached my goal get there? And the first thing is a lot of people say, well, okay, I'll believe it when I see it, right? How many times have we heard, I'll believe it when I see it? You have to see it in order to believe it. We have to get out of using our five senses to create this future vision of ourselves. This happens internally first, and then we see it externally. 
So if you're if you have a weak belief, you're going to have a weak result. And the only way to build belief is through auto suggestion, which I'm going to give you a really specific process and I love using it. So that's one thing that I think is very important is when we're working from the goal, we have to use that sense of belief. You can't see it, you can't feel it yet, but you can feel it in your mind and that's what I want you to go from here. So think about the person that reached their goals. What are their daily standards of behavior? Because there's a huge difference between a goal and a standard of behavior. That goal, that irrevocable committed decision that you will get this done, that is, that's there. Like that is pretty concrete. That's not going to change very much. That usually takes a long time to get to versus a standard. Your standard is like your bar of behavior. And if you weigh 200 pounds, you have 200 pound standards. If you want to weigh 150 pounds, you have to develop the standards, the daily standards and discipline of a person that weighs 150 pounds. That's the difference between goal and standard. And so I want you to just instantly think, okay, I get that. Yes, I have the standards of a 200 pound person or a 250 pound person. I am going to develop the standards of a 150 pound person immediately. Standards are something that you can change, you can up level, and you can hold yourself accountable to on a moment by moment basis, which I love. I love talking about standard. So from there, I want you to think about, all right, I have my goal. What are these standards of living that the person who already achieved my goal is doing? And one thing that you can look at is your calendar. And this is the first challenge that I give every single person listening. What is the calendar, the daily activities of somebody who has already reached their goal? Are they spending an hour scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and TikTok? Are they spending two hours absorbing content and not really taking action on that content? Are they spending two hours a night watching TV? No, they're not. People that reach goals cut time wasters from their schedule. They say, my commitment to my goal is greater than my commitment to scrolling on Instagram or scrolling TikTok or watching endless hours of YouTube rabbit holes. I am more committed to the future version of myself, and therefore I will act accordingly. So when you start to make every single decision from the goal and your standard of living, you are either accepting or rejecting ideas from the goal, from your new standard, it becomes crystal clear what activities and what thoughts are holding you back from being there. So the first challenge is to track your time for one week. I know it sounds like a pain. Again, it's good to get outside of your comfort zone. Let's work on that philosophy. Get a journal and write down, like hour by hour, 30 minutes, however you want to do it. What are you doing in this in this span of time? And then next to it, write, is it productive? Is this something that my future self would be doing or not? And hold yourself accountable. So when we understand how we are managing our activities, because that's what we're doing. You cannot manage time. Everybody has the same amount of time. What we manage is our activities and how we use our time. Then we gain a lot of power back and we stop wasting time and we can divert that time and energy towards that future version of ourselves that we know already exists and we are working from. So after you have done a serious schedule reflection and you've identified Hmm, where am I wasting my time? How can I optimize things? I want you to remind yourself that there are only a few things within our control. We can control our thoughts. We can control our efforts. We can control our attitude. And so I think if we focus on those three things, our thoughts, our efforts, our attitude, and our focus, So how focused are we on a day-in, day-out basis? I think that's a huge barrier. People get distracted. They forget. Auto-suggestion, again, we're going to be talking about a process for that, will help you with all four of those things within your control. And so once we understand what is your current calendar and what does your calendar need to be, we can start getting rid of the time wasters and adding in things that are going to be more productive. The next thing is who do they hang around? Are there people in your life that are energy hijackers? sucking energy. They're just full of negativity. Are there things around you? Like, do you always have the news on just pouring negativity into your life? Whatever is causing a negative influence around you should be eliminated as much as possible. If it's a family member, reduce contact. I call it fortifying your frequency. You really want to fortify your personal frequency 
to live from the inside out and not let external factors affect your inside because you are giving away personal power every single time. And I just did a couple really good podcast episodes on my show if you want to refer them to it on non-attachment, non-resistance, non-reaction, and non-judgment. Um, we spent, I think, two and a half hours just covering those four words right there. And so I'm a big believer that if you struggle with that emotional hijacking, it's because you're either attached to something, you're resisting something, you're reacting, or you're judging. And so those are four things that we could have in a whole another episode on, but I think those are important and those are definitely qualities of people who reach their goals. So after you're asking yourself, okay, who in my life is toxic? Who do I need to, to gracefully dismount from in a relational sense? Um, I want you to ask, what is the person who already reached your goal? What is their attitude like? And attitude are your thoughts and your emotions. Are they negative? Are they complaining? Are they wasting time? Are they procrastinating? No, they are getting to it every single day. I think a huge, huge thing that prevents people from reaching their goals is the old programming of I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. No, we do it now. And that is something I tell myself all day long. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do those dishes now. Put those clothes away now. Keep your environment clean. Get your stuff in order and stop procrastinating. That is a behavior of a goal achiever. So that's another thing that I think is important when you're asking yourself the questions of, all right, well, what is the future version of myself? How do they show up? How do they behave? This is how they behave. They get outside of their comfort zone. They are intentional of their thoughts, their emotions, who they hang around. They have excellent activity management and they only focus on productive activities and they control their thoughts, their effort, their focus, their attention. And that's what we're going to get to next. So this last part of the conversation is all about something called auto-suggestion. And auto-suggestion means we are giving ourselves food for thought. We are consciously putting things into our mind. We are brainwashing ourselves to become that future version of ourselves that we want to be. And auto-suggestion happens only through repetition and faith. So faith is believing in something that you don't see yet. And if you don't believe it, you're not going to achieve it. So I think that that's very important. If you're struggling with faith, the two things that I would recommend, well, the biggest thing is expand your time frame. Like if your goal is a 50-pound weight loss and you are attached to that having to happen within the next 12 months, release that attachment, expand the window. That will help improve the believability of the goal. Because if I were to ask you, can you lose 50 pounds this year? Your believability might be a five out of 10. Like mm, Maybe if I'm super strict. And I ask, can I? Can you lose 50 pounds sometime in the next 10 years or your lifetime? Then the answer is probably going to be yes. So again, we're looking at those attachments to our own expectations deep. And when we're using auto-suggestion, there are three processes that I recommend. Now, the first is when you decide what you want, that irrevocable committed decision, and you're future pacing yourself on what's the schedule, what are the activities, what's their attitude like, I encourage people develop to develop some sort of document, like a vision statement. We call it a personal faith formula. And write it out, like write out in present tense that person, how they're feeling, how they're acting. Mine is so odd. Like mine is a, a kick AS personal faith formula. And I took a lot of time to write it and I'm really, really proud of it. I don't have it with me right now, but it gets me in the frame of mind that I want to be in for the rest of the day. That's what's important here. And so when we're talking about daily routines and daily processes for auto-suggestion, which is instilling that personal belief in yourself, reminding yourself of how you intend to show up to go um, to move towards your goal, essentially, but you're working from the goal. The first thing is actually an evening routine for what I recommend. A lot of people talk about morning routines, and I'm a huge fan of morning routines. It's actually where I started, but I have found there to be such power in an evening routine, too. The first reason is because it's an opportunity to set yourself up for success for the following day. And it's an opportunity to say, I'm going to do it now. It is so, so easy to procrastinate or delay doing something, especially at the end of a long day. But if you can develop the discipline to study yourself in the evening, 
man, that will carry you through and it will give you kind of a jump start to the morning routine. So for the evening routine, I want you to think about this is your self-study time. We're not studying a podcast. We're not studying insulin resistance. We're not studying any course content. I am studying myself because the success is essentially a few disciplines developed over time. You have to have the right action. You got to be consistent. That's that's how it works, you know? So we cannot move forward successfully without understanding our own triggers, understanding our own emotions, understanding our own thoughts. We want to develop a lot of um, emotional sensitivity and awareness and have a strong curiosity into how do I react and why do I do that? So this is for studying yourself. And I want you to ask yourself a few questions. So the first thing before the questions is actually read that personal faith formula. Remind yourself, who am I working toward to become? How do they show up? Did I do that? So this is self-accountability. You are asking yourself, did I have the attitude of the person who achieved my goal? Did I have the attitude? That's a, that's a tough question because most of us have moments in our day where we didn't have the best attitude. So this is our honest self-study. Did I have the discipline of the person who achieved my goal? How can I improve tomorrow? What were my triggers and why did they bother me? And how can I change them or adapt to them tomorrow? Did I operate with the personal standard of the person who achieved my goal? So did I let my standard dip during the day? Did I procrastinate? Did I push something off? Or did I do what I said I was going to do? Which brings me to the next part, which is to write out three to six action items for the following day. I think these can be health related. These can be work related. These can be life related. I do all of the above. Whatever I know needs to get done the next day, even like this morning, my daughter was supposed to wear wacky clothes to school. Like how many parents have so many things like that, weird things to remember for their kids that they forget. And then they show up to the school and like, oh no, my kid's not in wacky clothes. And you know, all that can be prevented with some proactive evening routine action item setting. And so I set, I look at my calendar for the next day and I'm like, these are my intentions. These are what, it, this is what I'm going to get done for the next day in present tense. Not, um, you know, I will do this podcast episode with Matthew, but podcast episode with Matthew, like I'm doing it, like it's done. Because again, we want to work from the goals. So intentionally doing those. And then and here's the part, hard part, asking yourself, is this a productive activity? Is it a productive activity? Because a lot of times we're just working from our old programming. And this is a huge hint, a huge tip I want everybody to remember. The second that you start rationalizing your decisions or negotiating with yourself, you are working from the old program that is not working from the goal. So rationalizing and negotiating with yourself, those are two questions that you can ask to kind of identify where can I improve tomorrow? So the three to six action items I write out and then I envision myself having them done. Uh, I also do some gratitude in the evenings. I try to do three things from the last 24 hours and then that's it. So in the morning, it's a little bit simpler from, from my per perspective. There's all sorts of different ways to do this stuff. But I read the personal faith formula. I also like to listen to it, which is a tip I'll get to in a second. I do some gratitude. I review my action items for the day because I'm forgetful and I want to be sure that I'm getting done what I intended to get done. My attention is on my intentions, not the TV, not social media, not somebody else. My attention is on my intentions and I am intentional about how I spend my time. And then I, after I review those action items, I start checking them on the list, off the list. I'm like, okay, check morning routine, check workout because I work out in the morning. Um, and then I just kind of go throughout my day. I keep that list by me for a reminder. And then I also do a visualization. So if you have a big goal, like let's say you want to walk, like you want to lose 50 pounds. And to celebrate that, you want to go on a beach vacation with your spouse. I want you to think about walking on the beach in shorts and a tank top, feeling super confident and proud of yourself, listening to the water, smelling the salt water, feeling the breeze talking about what you're going to have for dinner, holding each other's hand, just feeling really proud of the accomplishment. And you get in that feeling. And then I love to say things like, I breathe in confidence. I breathe out doubt. I breathe in faith. I breathe out fear. I breathe in acting right away. I breathe out procrastination. So as I'm breathing in and out, I'm reminding myself of the qualities that I want to breathe in and the qualities that I want to release. And I listen to a visualization like this every morning. It takes like three minutes. Um, and mine actually is like one, like walking with my husband on the beach. So that's why I can kind of spit that one off right away. 
Because the more we can get into the vibration of our goal, the faster we will reach that goal. I have, I have experienced this time and time again with myself. It is such a cool thing. And so that's kind of the morning routine. Sometimes I just sit there and meditate a little bit and I just breathe in and out. And it, like that's more of a receptive type of meditation, not necessarily a visualization. And I wanted to just bring up something here. These processes will change you from the inside out. And that is the best part of reaching your goal. A lot of people think that the outcome is what is the coolest part and it's not. It's who you become along the way to reaching that outcome. That's what our bodies love. Like that's where all the dopamine is. That's where the feel good is. It's it's developing that internal sense of self-trust and self-discipline and self-integrity that you are a person that does what you say you're going to do. That feels good. So the goal is not as important as who you become along the way to reaching the goal, which is why I'm not a huge fan of quick fixes um, or weight loss medications if that's the only we talked about that last time. If that's your only intervention, this that that does not lead to lasting change because you're not changing from the inside out. So after the morning routine, what I do then throughout the day, every time I go to the bathroom, instead of scrolling through Instagram, I have a 30 second clip from my personal faith formula of the most poignant parts and things that I need to remember throughout the day. So one of mine is I don't snack, overeat, or emotionally eat. Those are three of the things that I continually have to check myself on. And I've had to raise my standard on. I really realized recently my standard for that should be one bite. Like in my in the in my past, it used to be like, okay, I don't know. What what considers overeating? I don't know, 200 calories, 300 calories. No, one bite past enough is overeating. Like one bite of a snack is a snack. So I'm holding myself to a higher standard to become the type of person that I want to become. And I would encourage you to do the same. Think about think about all the standards that we can do in a in a single day. Every single action that you're doing is a standard that can be assessed. And so I listen to that because auto suggestion again, you're reminding yourself of your goals throughout the day. And man, that has helped me so much. I can't even tell you. So how I do this, if you're not sure how do you record something like that, you can use a voice memo app on your phone. It's free. And I record the personal faith formula, my visualization, and then like the 30 second audio clip that I do every time I go to the bathroom. Some people also like to use other visual stimuli for auto suggestions. So you could put a post-it on the mirror of a mantra that you want to remember. You can have it in your car. You can have it on your refrigerator. You can have it in your cabinet, wherever you might like by the TV. Sometimes if you struggle with snacking at night or on top of the remote control, like as you're working to change behaviors, this is really important to do this auto suggestion. And so the last thing is, well, how do we implement all of this? And that goes into the habit stacking that you brought up earlier. If you already drink a cup of tea or coffee in the morning, fantastic. That's when you do your morning mindset routine. If you already have a habit of watching TV, do it before you watch TV in the evenings. Everybody has a habit of going to bed, so we can always have it stack this evening routine before we go to bed. There's always ways that we can work this into our into our lifestyle. And I heard a quote recently that's like, you can either make excuses or you can make the life that you want, but you can't have both. And so I think a lot of people are just, you know, buying their own excuses. They're buying their own BS and they're not getting the results that they want. So I hope this conversation not only sparked something in them to be like, I am not living up to my potential, but also gave them a really clear roadmap for how to use auto suggestion and how to think about goal setting and standard setting in, in a way that they can take right away and say, okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to re-listen to this episode. I'm going to jot down notes and I'm going to create my morning and evening routine and I'm going to commit to it. Because let me tell you something, at the end of my personal faith formula, there is a line that says, I am committed to my morning and evening routines to hold myself to this standard. So it's almost like a full circle thing. It's like every single day, twice a day, I am recommitting to the morning and evening routine. And that is how I stay on track, even if I'm on vacation, like it does not matter where I am. I'm always 100% committed to my goals. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. But we want the intent to be perfect. And so I think if you're going to use your willpower for anything, like use your willpower to rewire your brain. And that is the best, most effective thing that you can do with your willpower is to develop the focus and the discipline because motivation will get you started and discipline takes you to the finish line. So we have to use our, our willpower to rewire our brain to be more disciplined and focused on the things that actually move the needle forward. And that is learning how to control your thoughts, which will therefore control your emotions and your actions. 
So I hope that everybody found this kind of episode masterclass on habit change super helpful and informative. I'm happy to answer any questions because I know I riffed for like 30 minutes. I had a pretty, <laughs> I had a lot to say today. <laughs> yeah, you had a lot to get off your chest. No, it was interesting. Yeah. You mentioned the word autosuggestion. I've spoken about that before on this podcast. We're already engaging in autosuggestion, but in a negative way in respect of our yeah. negative thought patterns and our negative behaviors. So it's not that you're asking people to do anything that they're not already doing. You're just asking them to shift their focus. Yeah, it's going. It's moving from the subconscious to the conscious. We're bringing, that's exactly what we're doing with this mindset time. We are consciously influencing our subconscious mind and rewiring that part of ourselves. Because you are right. Like everybody is always auto-suggesting this. This is not something new. You do what your dominant thoughts tell you to do. But most people's dominant thoughts just are not wire like honed in well enough to reach their goals and if we don't self-reflect if we're not self-aware as you said earlier we fall back then in our old unhealthy routines and habits yeah i call it the old program then the old program takes over yep. talk to me about discipline you mentioned it there because you strike me as somebody who has been through this and who has honed their discipline very very well how do you talk to people and how do you help people foster that discipline that they need, not just day to day, but moment to moment for this to be a success? That's a great question. I told my best friend once I, I purchased a book, The Celebration of Discipline, and she goes, that is the last book that you need, Morgan. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay. Um, success is, is not, it doesn't happen without discipline. And I think a lot of people have an aversion to discipline, like it's going to be hard or something like that, but discipline leads to freedom. And so I think it's rewiring your philosophy around discipline and learning to love discipline and structure and intentionality. And I think what's really important is that you don't bite off more than, than you can chew. You know, if you've listened to this conversation today and you're thinking, man, my mindset is terrible, don't start with an evening and a morning routine. Maybe you just start with a morning routine or maybe you just start with an evening routine. Maybe you just take one part of the evening routine. And so I think the commitment doesn't change. The goal doesn't change, but your plan can change. And a, a very common reason that people give up too soon is they just bite off more they can more than they can chew. And in my mind, that's a blessing because that's just information. That's just data. And if you have a growth mindset and you're thinking, everything is happening for me, I can learn something from any single situation, you take all of the negativity and the guilt and the shame out of this process we call habit change. And then everything is material. You know, everything is material that you can study about yourself. So my biggest tip when getting started is start with the really, really small habits first and build on them. So inside our program, we call it our Zibli habit hierarchy. And the first habits that we re really recommend re doing are these mindset routines. And then we get into like water and sleep and the habits that you're going to have the highest return on your time and energy investment. But if people are just like, oh, I'm changing my diet overnight and I'm going to start this like five day a week exercise routine and I'm going to bed at nine, even though there's a lot of things right now that are in your environment that make that very difficult, they're not going to be sticking to it. And so I think giving yourself grace, compassion and being realistic with what's possible for me and then recognizing your wins. That's a really important part that I do that I didn't mention in this morning and evening routine is if I have a win for that day. I give myself a pat on the back, like, hey, good job not emotionally eating. Good job not overeating at dinner. Good job not reacting when your kid was driving you a little crazy. You know, like those are the types of things that we want to positively reinforce. So the first is bite off what you can chew. And the second is recognize your wins. And that's going to give you that, that feedback loop of success that will keep you motivated to develop the discipline and keep moving forward. You use the term growth mindset there, and I was reminded of a great book I read a few years ago called Mindset by Carol Dweck. I highly recommend it. It's brilliant. Yeah. And uh, she talks about uh, in the book, she says, your abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. And that reminded me of what you said in our uh, last episode, where you said you have to do the work. You have to do the work if you want to bring about uh, behavior change and a transformation and to achieve that sustainable weight loss that you were talking about. But doing the work is hard though, isn't it? It's really hard. Yeah. Well, I think giving into your five senses is not doing the work. And so if you see something, you smell something, you're giving in, that is not the hard, that's not the hard work. The hard work is what I just described, studying yourself, doing this disciplined mindset work 
before you see the results. Developing the discipline of monitoring your thoughts and becoming emotionally sensitive and rewiring your brain. That is the hard work. And once you do that, the actions come so much easier. And I think that so many people have it backwards. You know, they, oh, I couldn't stick to my workout plan because I hated getting up early or my husband sabotages my eating. And they're always blaming someone else. Like I said, you can have your excuses or you can have your goals, but you can't have both. And yeah, I mean, I'm all like growth is one of our core values because it's required. It is required. Commitment and growth are two of our core values. Talking about mindset and talking about uh, behavior change there, which is more important when it comes to sustainable weight loss is, or do they go hand in hand? I presume they do. Um, is it the, the mindset? Is it that openness to adopting new behaviors or is it physically exercising, moving more and ascribing to that healthy uh, regimen, that healthy diet? I think it's both. I would encourage people to start with mindset if you had to pick one. But confidence and success, again, it requires right action and it requires right thinking. And they go hand in hand. Like if you're just sitting around all day trying to manifest a better body, it's not going to happen. Like It's just, it's not going to happen. And again, the that's that's really outcome focused. And that is not allowing you to become this more confident person along the way, which is the ultimate goal anyways. Like if someone has a health goal, it's probably honestly not the outcome that they're as focused on as the emotion they attribute to that outcome itself. And if you recognize you have the power to feel any emotion that you want to feel now, let's start feeling those emotions and feel your way there. That's going to be a lot more effective than just like white knuckling the action. And that's why I think hand in hand, you have to have right thought and you have to do the mindset work, but you can't just sit around all day and expect something to happen. You also have to act and also, the action is where we learn. The action is where we grow. The action is where we see where do we make mistakes? Where did I bite off more than I can chew? But if you're not, I personally, I think sitting or sitting around doing, doing the mindset work isn't always getting us outside of our comfort zone. I think that's really where the action is. And that's where we can learn and grow and then bring those lessons back to the mindset side and, and learn and grow from them too. One of the big takeaways from this chat today will be that term you mentioned, auto-suggestion. Can you remind us again exactly what that involves and how that can help people bring about that mindset change and behavior change? Yep. Auto-suggestion is essentially repeating a message to yourself, an intentional, consciously chosen message of how of who you want to become. I call it brainwashing yourself. And you can do it with, you can listen to this on repeat. This is auto suggesting you like to do certain things. But I think it's most powerful when it comes from our own voice. So auto suggestion, repeating a belief or a message that you want to adopt in your subconscious mind. Repetition is key. Belief and faith are key to making this work. You can't just rotely read it like you're, you know, reading a, a menu at a restaurant and expect something to change. Your subconscious language is emotion. And so if your personal faith formula does not invoke emotion, that's like me talking to you in Russian. You would not understand what I was saying. And so if you're just like rotely reading this thing and it doesn't light you up and spark a fire under your re your rear end to change and to get better, that's not going to hit your subconscious mind. That's all in your conscious mind. So sometimes if people want to play music, like their favorite song on the background while they're I'm reading this just to get the emotion a little bit more elevated. That's a fun tip too. But just remember your subconscious mind's language is emotion. And so we have to in, in ignite feelings of belief and faith and confidence and joy and energy. And we do that through our thoughts and what we see and what we hear and what we listen to and then what we do essentially. How should we think and feel and treat ourselves if we fall off that wagon moments early? Like it's an opportunity to grow. You know, I mean, like you would treat a four year old that fell off a bike when they were learning how to ride a bike with passion, like with patience, with compassion, um, with grace. You wouldn't be like, shame on you. You can't ride the bike yet. You know, this is this. I mean, unless you're a mean parent, but this is a growth process. And so if you can um, become a little bit, that's the part of non attachment and non reaction. We want to even become like not attached to our results and not react to our own mistakes. If we can have a detached mindset, a neutral mindset, and view everything as a learning opportunity and just take the emotion out of it a little bit, that is going to help you develop the, the grace and give yourself the patience 
and the kindness that you give to everybody else. We got to pour that into your own life as you're going through this because really the negativity is so counterproductive. The guilt, the shame, so counterproductive. It's the old program working. That is not the new standard that you are living by. That is not the standard that the person who reached their goals lives by. And if you're only accepting and rejecting ideas, i.e. thoughts, from that standard, we reject those thoughts right away and we move towards more growth mindset thoughts. So much helpful advice. Hopefully a lot of people out there will be able to dip into that and uh, get some constructive advice as to how they can uh, achieve uh, not just a weight loss goal, but I think any goal, because what you've described there, the template you've described there could be ascribed to any goal, I think. Absolutely. Uh Uh-huh. 100%. If people want to find out more about you, where can they go, Dr. Nolte? A couple of places. Our website is zivli.com, so Z-I-V-L-I.com. And then we have a great YouTube channel as well. There's some mindset stuff on there. It's a lot of insulin resistance, blood sugar stuff, health-related podcasts, so they can just look my name up on YouTube and find me there. Dr. Morgan Nolte, a pleasure once again. Thank you for your time today. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Happy Habit Podcast. If you enjoyed it, or indeed any of the previous 400 episodes, show your support. You can do so for free. You can like, subscribe, and share with other people who you think might enjoy them too. Leave the podcast a positive rating on iTunes and on Spotify. And if you're over on YouTube, become a subscriber and leave a comment and click that bell notification for future videos. Until next time, stay happy.